This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Good afternoon, Bob Holt. How are you doing today? Are you guys a beautiful day to be at the ballpark out here at the uh, Bob Walker watching uh, Louisiana Tech uh, taking batting practice right now? All right. Have you had a chance? I know that Dave Van Horn and, and some of the Razorback players spoke to the media. Are they the only ones that have spoken, or has anybody else been able to get up yet? No, they're, they're the only ones. Tech will have their presser here, I think, in about 30 minutes or something like that. Well, so the first things that we heard are that Dave Van Horn will not be announcing a starting pitcher until later tonight. Hagen Smith isn't going to tell anybody who it is or when he's going to pitch. And Brady Tigert is uh, apparently not on the 27-man roster this weekend. That's that's basically what I got just from looking around on social media. Um, what else did I miss? Well, now those, those are the three things. And, yeah, there's no apparently about, about Brady. Uh, we followed up with Dave, and he said he's definitely not on the – on the 27 man roster, he's got a shoulder. He said he wasn't feeling well. And you know, you're not quite sure what does that mean? He said it's his shoulder kind of tender and he wants guys out there, you know, obviously that are feeling good physically and feeling confident. And we've, we've seen, you know, Brady was one of their best pitchers. Well, probably one of the best pitchers in the country for the first part of the season. And then he struggled uh, with short stints and struggled with command. And if he's got a shoulder issue that, that helps explain maybe what's going on. I mean, you don't obviously <laughs> want him to be injured, but it helps explain maybe why his, he hadn't been pitching as well lately. So Dave said he feels like they still have enough pitching depth. Of course, you know, they don't have Eric Fisher. who's done. He, he confirmed Cooper Dots is done for the year, but won't need surgery. So they're not at a hundred percent, but Dave said compared to what they experienced last year, they're, they're much healthier. And so, um, but yeah, that, 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 to me, that, that, that's a big loss for Brady. But like Dave said, it would have been a bigger loss a couple months ago when he was throwing better. And uh, I certainly don't expect Hagen to be the starter tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. But, um, yeah, I, I guess the teams that meet tonight or the coaches do, and that apparently it's when they'll reveal who they're starting. He said, I think he said he just didn't want, you know, Southeast Missouri State when they practice today to know, to know who Arkansas's starter is. Hey, Bob, I, I know in the SEC tournament, Diggs was batted leadoff. Where do, where do you bat Diggs in the order, and, and who do you think will we'll have leading off for us? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, Dave was asked about that. He said he's trying to get him some, uh, you know, some extra bats and try to try to try to get him better. I don't think Zemo's announced the starter. They've got a couple guys who could go. One's a righty, one's a lefty. So I think if they throw the righty, you might still keep uh, Kendall in there because he's a lefty. And maybe if they go with the lefty, maybe you move him down the order a little bit. Maybe you start Peyton Stovall. Maybe you start Peyton Holt. I mean, as leadoff guy, um, I'm not sure, but. Uh, one thing, uh, you know, Kendall said his shoulder feels good. You know, he heard it early in the season, so I did the second, hurt his left shoulder. And uh, I think it was his left shoulder anyway. And uh, But um, he said he feels good now. He said he's been pain-free for, for quite a while now, and it's just about, you know, getting in there. And, you know, Dave mentioned he'd like to see him swing more, that he's pro- probably taken too many pitches. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they left him in that leadoff spot. Did they come across like a loose group? You had four of them up there, and, and and all of them know what it's like to compete in the NCAA tournament. But you know how sometimes you can kind of tell when someone's trying to project calm, but they're faking it? What What's your sense just from the body language? Well, certainly that group they had up there. I mean, you know, you know Peyton Stovall you know, was hurt as a freshman, but, but he got to play. Or, I'm sorry. He was hurt last year, but you know he, he was a big part of their success in Stillwater and when they beat North Carolina and get to Omaha the last year. Unfortunately, he was hurt, um, but you know he's played a lot of games, and uh, obviously Hagen Smith's been in a lot of big games and Kendall Diggs too. They're they're all three year guys, so yeah, I think they kind of know the score. They they wish they would have played better in Hoover, but they realize that's you know done and behind them, and lots of teams, including Arkansas, have gone on to, to at Hoover and gone to Omaha and had success. And Mississippi State went on to at Hoover a couple. I guess in 2021 won national championship. So I think they flushed that. I think they enjoyed having uh, some time off, having a weekend off. They talked about doing some team bonding things. And so I, th- I think they're probably in a good spot mentally and as, about as healthy as they could be, you know, obviously with, 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 with news about Brady. But, yeah, I think they're probably probably in a good spot, feeling good going in, going into this regional. And, and they're at home where they're 33 and 3. Doesn't mean they're going to win because they didn't win at home last year, but. Honestly, all, all due respect to all the teams in here, 
I don't see anybody that looks like TCU was playing last year when they came in here. So you said you don't think Hagen Smith will pitch tomorrow. I don't think he will either. I have my reasons. What are your reasons? Well, I mean, if, if you want to win the game, one game, Hagen's your guy, right? But if you want to win the regional, you have to look at the big picture. And, um, you know, I think, honestly, I, and I, I'm, I grew up in Cape Girardeau. You know, my parents were in Southeast Missouri State, so I have a lot of respect for sports in Southeast Missouri State. But if Arkansas can't beat uh, Southeast Missouri State with their pitching staff, excluding Hagen, then they've got serious issues. So the, 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 the best way to win this regional is to take care of business tomorrow with your, you know, whether it's Gagewood or Mason Molina or whoever, and, you know, your bullpen. And then you, you win that presumably, and then you have Hagen Smith going, and really that game two is the biggest game of the regional because you win those first two, I, I don't know what the percentage is of winning the regional, but it's got to be super high. And so then you've got Hagen going in the key game against either Louisiana Tech or, or, or Kansas State. And so I think that's the that, that's 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 the thought process behind that. I, w- I would I would save him and wait till the, your first elimination game. I would I would be OG with it and, and go out there. Who who scares you the most at a La Tech in Kansas State, Bob? Well, I mean, they're, they're both good. I mean, La Tech's the number two seed. K State's the three seed. You know, it's kind of blew my mind. This is only K State's fifth regional ever, and their first since 2013 when they beat Arkansas in the Manhattan Regional. So, I guess. Um, I guess out of those two teams, just because the way it's seated, and of course you got Pot Springs, Ethan Bates playing for Louisiana Tech. He's had a heck of a year. Conference USA Player of the Year, two-way player, pitcher, and hitter. Uh, I think he's got about 70 RBIs, really productive. So I, I think uh, the team that probably could give Arkansas the most trouble is Louisiana Tech. But you know, two, three games are always you know usually pretty even. I just don't. I'm I'm trying to think of see. I, I know the teams that have come in and and beaten Arkansas in regionals at least since I've been here. And it's been Missouri State in 2017, and, and then it was it was TCU last year. Uh, TCU had caught fire, and that was a team that was just slugging it. Missouri State. It was a really good Missouri State team. They had a couple big leaguers on that club. I, I don't know if I see that with either of these three other teams that are here. You know, and I don't know, maybe if I would have looked, <laughs> if I would have had better uh, vision and, and seen that about TCU going into the regional last year, but I, I guess I felt pretty good because Arkansas played so well at home, but they weren't the same team that they were throughout most of the year. I think this year it's a little bit of a different story. And I, 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 I don't know if I see that kind of talent from the other three teams, and I don't see any lockdown aces i see a couple good relievers but that might be it yeah i mean i like i don't see like like lsu i think it's the number two seed in chapel hill i don't i'm sure north carolina was real thrilled to have lsu consent there but i don't see anybody like i mean like an sec team frankly and that's what arkansas has been playing you know all these weekends for 10 straight weekends but yeah on paper arkansas definitely should win this regional but uh, I think this is 11 time Arkansas has hosted. Maybe five times they advance, and five times they have, and they've gotten to Omaha a lot of times on the road. So it's like uh, I mean, it's double elimination, but it's kind of like March Madness in that you just never know what's going to happen. Southeast Missouri, Cape Girardeau. I think I've stopped there a couple of times on the way to St. Louis. How long did you live in Cape Girardeau, Bob? Well, we moved there. I think I started in the third grade, and I graduated high school there. And then, you know, of course, my parents were nice enough to let me come home for summers from Missouri and stuff. So, um, yeah, so I, li- I basically spent you know majority of my life there until I until I moved to Fayetteville. Why are they still Southeast Missouri when Southwest got to change to Missouri State? Why did SEMO have to stay with the double direction? I don't know, but um, sometimes I still slip up and call – call uh missouri state southwest missouri state but i i don't really know I, that, that, that that's a good question um have you seen but, the I mean, people, hmm? no no go ahead sorry no i'm gonna say people in southeast missouri i think they take a lot of pride in that designation and like i think a lot of people probably you know in in uh, cajun country probably like southwestern louisiana instead of louisiana i know they want to be called louisiana but i call them louisiana lafayette I mean, um, but, I think um, a name Boot Heel State would be even would be a little more entertaining. Could we go with Boot Heel State? Well, so they've been Southeast Missouri State for so long. I think that's that's you know what people identify with, and you know all that. So you know, I, I think it's a good it's a good regional it's a good regional designation. People from there 
should should be proud, you know, of the Southeast Missouri State. So it's a great area of the country. Hey, we were talking earlier, Colton. What was that that kid's name from Illinois that it came, it, he he decommitted? That's, uh, that's Coleman Hawkins. Yeah, center from Illinois. Have you heard anything on him, Bob? Well, I know he's uh, available through the portal. I mean, that that's Richard Davenport's uh, area. Of I got you. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I just know he's real, real good, and he'd be a good catch for anybody. Anybody'd love to have that guy. You may be covering a game at Madison Square Garden this next season, Bob. From what Cal said yesterday at the uh, SEC meetings, it didn't sound like it's confirmed. It sounds like it's something that uh, he or, or or just the coaching staff is working on. But hey, if you're playing at if you're playing at Madison Square Garden, that makes you a select program in college basketball. Either that, or you're in the Big East tournament. Yeah, it covered the you know, sorry, the I think they may be getting ready to do the presser, but I'm not quite this minute, but I'm getting down here to the room to make sure I'm here. Well, actually, I'm the only one here, so I guess I can talk aloud. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Madison Square Garden, it's the Mecca. It's uh, kind of an older building now because I think it opened in the late 60s. The only time I've ever been there to cover a game was for the NIT. And, gosh, what year was that? I think it was 1997. Arkansas played uh, Michigan. I think I beat by Michigan in the semis and then lost to UConn. They had a consolation game. Consolation game was played for a pretty good crowd for the semis. Uh, I think Florida State played UConn. Of course, UConn had a lot of fans. And really, in 1997, the IT was a little bit bigger deal. But I bet you there was ten or 11,000 fans. And then for the uh, for the consolation game, I think it was played like at 4.30 in the afternoon. And you could have heard a, a pin drop. <laughs> I remember covering it. Woody Bass, you know, our uh, favorite attorney and Razorback booster. He was, I don't think he came there for the games, but he, he was there on business. And, but he came to the game. He came down there and we talked just like we were sitting on somebody's patio. It was so quiet. I bet there wasn't 500 people at the game. Who's, uh, who's press conference are you about to, you were, you're sitting in there waiting for everybody else to arrive now. Yeah, getting ready for Louisiana Tech. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's that's B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.